to continue here, we are going to talk about the kind of clothes you wear in uh, different conditions and, and I don't know, I guess layering and things like that. Yeah. So um, the main thing uh, with ultra running that, that's perhaps different from shorter distance is that chafing can become much more of an issue. Um, it can be uh, a showstopper. I, I met a guy a mile 80 of the Keys 100. And he was just shut down because he'd got chafing in a place we won't go into, but it was bad enough that he couldn't walk. He really couldn't put one foot in front of the other anymore. Yeah, especially um, in hot environments. There's yeah, a lot of sweating. Environments. Yeah, or rain. You know, it just gets nasty. So I wear compression gear. Uh, mm -hmm. Not always uh, true compression gear, um, like 2XU necessarily mm -hmm. or skins. Um, but just something that's going to be form-fitting so that the, uh, the material will stay with the skin and it's material on material rubbing, not material on skin. Um, the same with my tops. I wear a Under Armour heat gear top, uh, I, very thin. I wear it um, all the time yeah. too. Yep. Yeah. Almost exclusively. Um, yes, I even wear it in extreme cold conditions. I, I wear the heat gear version. And then layer over the top, and I find the heat gear spreads the the sweat out much more effectively. And then just layer over the top. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, other than that, the the only other thing that I would say that I do perhaps a little bit differently is I'm careful to cover up from the sun. Um, sunburn is more of an issue than people realize, and there's obviously long term health consequences to sunburn uh, with. Uh, melanomas and cancer. Yeah, I'm on the well, equator, so it's a big, big, big thing for me too. Especially, you're out there a lot yeah. of hours, and you know we have this uh, UV index that's over 11. You know, it's 11 plus. It's considered extreme yeah. all the time, and I'm running basically in the heat of the day. And uh, yeah, you yeah. you get a lot of people. Oh, I'm not gonna get a tan. You're gonna get a tan no matter what you're doing <laughs> because yeah. it's extreme. Yeah. So so I cover up. And the thing with sunburn is even uh, during a race, by the time your skin's gone red, you've lost the ability to sweat effectively, yeah. so you can't fall. Um, and on the flip side, your body can't uh, um, constrict the capillaries if you start getting cold. So your body starts losing its ability to regulate its temperature when you get sunburn. So... Even before you finish the race, you can start having real impact from sunburn. So uh, I'm a big believer in covering up. Occasionally I get it wrong. Usually uh, it's a winter or spring race when I kind of forget because it's cold out, but it's you know still nasty. Yeah, movie. just like skiing, you know, you still get you still get burnt. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Exactly. Um, so other than that, um, I tend to wear race ready shorts with the pockets in the back. Um, I, I don't understand why everybody doesn't wear them in ultras because the ability to shove a few odds and ends in the back um, so I can carry stuff easily. Um, so uh, so how, is it like a standard running short with pockets or is it like a kind of yeah, compression it, short? A, it's a compression short with pockets in the back. So it's more like a triathlon short. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, yeah. Um, so other than that, gear is is not particularly different from any other type of running gear. Do you uh, do you ever end up using any kind of a chamois butter or anything like that in your shorts? No, um, I'm not cycling, so that, that's obviously a, a big difference. Um, I find that the key is good form-fitting compression gear that doesn't leave any gaps, doesn't compress too tightly, um, if you start to get chafing, um, lubricants can help, taping can help, but typically by the time it starts, you're you're going to be in for a miserable time. Yeah, you know, it's very hard to to limit the damage once it starts. It's a little bit harder in triathlon, I think, because you know, like we come out of salt water, and we're wet, yeah. and then we sweat, and then we have to pee on ourselves on the bike. You know, and there's always yeah. just fluids and salts and stuff in there. And then there's these people that take all these salt tabs and they just look like it snowed on them, you know, and, and that's, yeah. that's all grinding in there. So yeah, if you get enough of a salt build up that it actually becomes an abrasive, it's horrible. Yeah. And that can get really nasty. So I, I will generally not run a chamois cream, but 
when, you know, I'm doing like a 30 mile run and I wear a triathlon shirt, which has a little bit of a chamois in it. And uh, yeah. so it's a little bit, there's a little bit of padding in there, which isn't necessarily the greatest thing for the run, but it's yeah. so much sweat build up on, on a run like that where it's a hundred degrees and it's 30 miles that yeah I have to have a little bit of an anti-friction barrier, but I'm, I'm a big, big believer in kind of the compression short type, you know, yeah. like a triathlon short, tight short with, with pockets. Cause I mean, you know, if, if anything else, you just put your key in it or something, you know, right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> racing and training yeah. are different in those kind of ways where you actually have to get back in your house, you know, and you can't just leave everything yeah. in your car. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. 